okay. So uh, my topic today uh, is about advanced test advanced techniques in UI testing. So let's cross that advance out of the way for uh, imposter syndrome. Uh, and uh, so it's more of like uh, the technical challenges that I uh, face along the way approaching the UI testing uh, and how uh, me and my team overcome the challenges that we have found. And uh, uh, after you, uh, many in the audiences may have uh, the app, commercial app, big scale. So uh, after my talk, maybe uh, you have any idea about how UI testing scale in your uh, team and your project. So raise your hand and share with us. Okay, uh, a little bit about me. So uh, my name is Wang, and uh, I'm currently uh, at Rakuten Reward SDK team at uh, Rakuten Asia, Singapore. I'm originally from uh, Vietnam. And uh, uh, I was in a team that uh, launched the original Sega Forever campaign. And you can find me on uh, Twitter at Wang December. Okay, uh, a bit about uh, the product. That's the, our product, Product and Reward SDK. Uh, help is a marketing campaign and help you uh, for the monetization if you target the Japan market. Okay, so uh, let's get to the topic. Uh, UI testing. So the agenda, so uh, I want first to get some uh, uh, obvious thing out of the way for the basic thing and then second to find the uh, uh, most problematic in uh, UI testing I think is to finding elements because uh, missing elements break a lot of your airflow when you are testing. So uh, that's number two and finally come to some other techniques like the automation, how to remove your app uh, when you are testing, or maybe test some uh, a sing individual uh, view controller in your app. All right. So uh, about UI testing, so this is a test pyramid that uh, Apple put out every uh, WWDC in recent years. So uh, uh, in the bottom, that's the unit testing, it's supposed to cover all your function, it's supposed to be fast, really fast, like maybe you can get up to thousand. Uh, of tests per second, if I mean, luck, uh, if no expectation and uh, asynchronous can get to that, obviously. And uh, on the top, uh, user interface, uh, UI testing, supposed to replicate on the user behavior and uh, user and how a normal user actually use your app and uh, interact with your app. So it's very slow, uh, of course. Uh, and it's, you suppose don't suppose to write it that much, that many of UI testing. And uh, UI testing, of course, different from unit testing. It requires an app launch. And uh, the way that uh, uh, this is some built-in for anyone not familiar, uh, some built-in function uh, for to replicate the uh, user behavior. You can, beside those tab, double tap, there's also uh, swipe up, swipe down, and uh, 3D touch uh, anything, of course, for you to replicate the whole user interface. And uh, beside that, there's also like clipboard, there's also like uh, uh, XCUI device for you to press home, volume up, down, many things you can do to uh, deal with the normal user behavior flow. And uh, one, one useful thing, another thing about UI testing, is to test your app in multiple languages and uh, multiple regions. So usually uh, uh, the common way, uh, you set the launch arguments. And uh, there may be the new setting in Xcode. Maybe there's some option next to that argument. Uh, in your new Xcode can help you set uh, language easier. But most people will do the uh, launch argument. Also, uh, also helpful when you try to set a different launch argument for core data. And, uh, Maybe to set a different scenario for your app to launch for testing. Really common thing. Uh, okay, so the question we come to is uh, what do we verify from those tests? Uh, many tutorial or UI testing on the internet, but uh, what do we verify from those? Uh, 
The first that I find use, useful for my uh, work now is a represent R flow because uh, if uh, at that moment my uh, element cannot be found, element missing, the R flow break. So uh, uh, of course that's something we need to fix. Uh, either our test or our code, and that's the most obvious most obvious thing for that. The flow will break, the test fail. The second thing, uh, helpful, uh, of the screen sort feature, you can always enable it. Screen sort if the test fail, uh, would help you with uh, UI testing. Take the screen sort. Uh, also, screen sort of course help you to test on variety of uh, device size and uh, multiple language, of course. Looking at the screen saw, very helpful. And finally, what do people are testing? So, uh, because uh, yeah, I have to do a little bit of research for uh, apply to my uh, writing UI testing work. So uh, I see people usually like uh, uh, asserting uh, like the display tag uh, element histable exists or the pop up dis disappear. Uh, you can easily find those things like some uh, common open source browser on the GitHub like Firefox, Focus, uh, Brave, iOS. Okay, so next, let's do the second one, second bar. Finding elements. How do we find elements when uh, doing UI testing? So the first uh, simple thing, find matching types uh, between like, these are provided built in by Apple. Uh, children matching, a specific type like button, text field, circle text field, uh, and descendant. Descendant is that uh, you don't care about the, the depth of uh, the hierarchy. I mean, it doesn't have to be the direct children of your uh, current element. Find matching type, that's it. Uh, the second uh, more common thing is uh, finding the button for button to tap or uh, a text field to type by via the stated text and accessibility identifier. So the stated text is that you simple, you saw a button, uh, like uh, you can write a button with lock in and then you call the stated text lock in. So that will fail when you change the language or uh, when your team decided that that kind of text is not usable in your user interface anymore. So uh, stated text useful. But uh, that will, the case that will, it will fail. So that, that when accessibility identifier comes in, uh, it will uh, help you find the uh, elements regardless of uh, what language or what label it is having right now. So for accessibility identifier, you can set it from your storyboard. Yeah, that little image up there. Uh, from your UI kit code, of course and uh, uh, with your Swift UI code also, uh, accessibility identifier easier to set as well. And next one, way for elements. So uh, this one I took from a uh, base test case of uh, Firefox Focus app. Although it might not be uh, useful these days because uh, Apple already have the way for assistant uh, built in, easy to use. Uh, however, you see uh, the Wi-Fi elements from uh, the Firefox Focus app, which uh, uh, I want to show some of the other techniques right here. The first is that they use the predicate, and the second is that set the expectation, like you often do in your unit testing when having a synchronous. Uh, okay, so the predicate right here. Uh, with predicate, uh, Simple form, assist equal to true. Uh, but you can use it with like, for example, you can check it with a label begins with something, a specific kind of string. Useful for that as well. A complex condition uh, using. So NS predicate, useful for that. Okay, so after we have a couple of techniques of uh, finding elements, so how do we build a test flow? Uh, a test flow is a user behavior flow that uh, in my team we usually have a test rail that uh, on the chart on the test case that we have to perform manually and uh, which make me come to the uh, uh, UI testing uh, why do I have to do it manually just do it automation 
Uh, well, uh, so uh, for making all of them together, make a user behavior flow. So at first, there's a built-in UI testing because uh, the little red button on your every time you write the UI testing, you see that little red button. Uh, that's the first one, but uh, the Apple building tool may not be usually reliable because the first thing is that it usually generate a code for you that uh, 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 rely on a status text. And uh, the second is that it kind of sucks when it comes to uh, uh, maybe complex input like swipe in, swipe out, or maybe type, typing in, typing really bad on that. And the two is that I feel uh, more comfortable in and uh, which I'm gonna demo more today is that using with LLDB commands usually very fine and uh, much more real, reliable for you. Okay, so uh, let's look at some uh, symbol demo right here. So I guess that's big enough. Okay. Uh, where is my tool? Okay. So the first one you're looking at is that uh, sample from, uh, of course, from uh, the Ray Wendelik UI testing. This is free on YouTube, easy to find. Uh, so uh, we got a test calculator and try function right here. Uh, with uh, We check for finding a status tag called result. And tap button 2, 4, and uh, it will display 24 right here. Yeah, really simple. So this is a dog years app supposed to calculate dog age from human. Uh, okay, uh, for anyone not familiar, so the AC test case right here, we do have uh, the setup function and uh, the teardown function. With the different is the app launch right here. Anyone not familiar, check that out. Okay, so. Uh, Test calculator and try right here. Let's do, I already do a couple, but let's do it again. Uh, so the first one, uh, the most simplest one, you print object app, which is gonna tell you on the elements and label. You guys see it clearly, right? It's yeah, so really big. Okay, so which can tell you on the object that we can interact with, with all of them has a label, dog, cat, children, human, something. And uh, one special thing right here, the result one has an identifier result because it has an accessibility identifier. So it doesn't uh, depend where you can look for it, doesn't depend on the string. But uh, however, uh, uh, besides that, for example, you can actually uh, fighting with some kind of tie, add buttons, list out on the button that you need. And uh, you can, uh, the interesting thing is that you can actually interact with these things. For example, doesn't have to do the fancy refresh thing when you do with your normal app thing. It will do your LL debugging that you may find the most somewhere. Just app dot uh, was done. For example, I would press the, let's do the echo button right here. And uh, I would tap. Did it show anything? You guys see that uh, flashing over there? Okay, let's do it again. Okay, let's, let's number nine. Yep. So you can actually this way, you build your uh, uh, behavior flow one by one and uh, until you find the flow that you need and then you finish it. Much better than uh, using that uh, little red dot there here to build your UI testing flow. Okay, so that's a simple one. So uh, let's look at a uh, bit more complex. Uh, so this is the uh, Firefox Focus app, uh, which I usually use because for referring, uh, reference purpose. So uh, where's the app? Okay, right here. Make it a little bit bigger. So uh, the first thing you're gonna see uh, might be useful for you when uh, doing UI testing is that the first is 
you have the lost web page function right here and they have the dismiss first run UI right here. So it means that uh, when you build UI testing your, for your app, there may be a lot of rep, uh, repetitive uh, flow that you may want to like dismiss your first merchandise, skip a menu or UI. Definitely write it and uh, save a lot of flow and time for your uh, code for coding in your UI testing. Okay, so uh, this one. So we already interact with the uh, UI kit objects, but what about web objects? Okay, so for web object, of course, so this is I already write one for logging into Facebook. So you can uh, actually check it right here. You can use web view to uh, interact with the web object. So, uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, Let's try to find the text field for the username right here. Let's make it a bit. Oh, where is it? So uh, one thing you may notice right here, so we find a placeholder value right here, mobile number or email address right here. Uh, but the thing is that, uh, well, obviously, the web field doesn't have the accessibility identifier. So it may be uh, a bit more limitation for you to do more with web views. You can either check like website already been rendered by checking any text in that web view or image on that web view already been displayed or not. But uh, much harder to find than compared to UI kit object, of course. And uh, so, so this one I will try with my luck right here. So I find a text view. Uh, first match and uh, the thing about uh, text view and things have to tap first and then type it uh, okay let's continue okay so it's with tie the text right here no all right so uh, I've been interact a bit so we break my flow so there's the uh, some code about the uh, moving app, but let's go back to that later. Okay, so uh, that's about fighting elements, and the third is about a couple of other things besides. The first is about automation. So uh, actually, I love to do it with uh, fast lane screenshot, where you can automate uh, uh, taking screenshot while doing UI testing. Of course, you can. It already included UI testing at scale, uh, multiple devices. Uh, yeah, automated. We use Fastlane, easier to set up. It's a, a CI CD tool for anyone not familiar. It's a CI CD tool with that sugar coat on the uh, boilerplate of the uh, command line interface. So, uh, because it's the command line interface, so easier to set up from Xcode build server or uh, maybe your chanking trick or something. And uh, this is uh, our sample app. And uh, uh, firstly, I'm going to generate you uh, a report. You can see some a bit blurry, but that's fine. Uh, going to have it on multiple screen sizes and multiple languages. And uh, that's what it can cover. Uh, very useful for that purpose. Generate multiple screen software for you to check all along after that. Although there may be some limitation, uh, the first one is that uh, uh, there may be, uh, for example, for a kind, one kind of device, it, it may only pick the latest iOS. And uh, of course, uh, not run on a uh, physical device. It's just some limitation, but uh, overall very useful. And uh, the next one is uh, when you come to the situation where you feel that you need to remove uninstall your app because uh, it's some, maybe you have some complex saving like uh, maybe in my case I, I save uh, our SDK serve some cookie and then uh, want to completely remove the app to make sure everything uh, so this is one of the web driver agent Facebook code uh, I twisted a bit uh, this is for you can use to removing your application 
simple. Uh, first thing you get the string ball up and then try to do uh, some simple thing like find your app icon. This is sandbox here, actually the, the app name you can put it. Uh, find, find your app icons, uh, press it and then uh, the coordinate right there is uh, to find the X, little X button so you can tap it and remove your application. But there are two problems to this, those code. The first is that uh, a bit weakness is finding the coordinate because in lately Apple ha has already put an accessibility identifier for the uh, X button to delete an app. So it's more useful to use that way instead of finding the coordinate. And the second one is that from iOS 11, we have the multitasking dock. So if you're finding the icons not uh, carefully, uh, because after you uh, close your app, there's only one in your home screen and one in your dock. So how do you remove it? So I will demo it uh, a bit later. Yep. And finally, on uh, testing individual UI view controller, also uh, demo later. Uh, so it technically when you come to some uh, development requirement from your team that you may want to test, you are testing uh, an, a simple UI view controller of your, and uh, how do you do it? So my recommendation is to use the launch framework, which I use uh, normally, and uh, it now support also the Swift package manager, easy to use. Uh, okay, so right now, let's look at some uh, final demo. Okay, another dog years, but uh, quite different story. So this one has been setting up with uh, uh, launch framework. Uh, although I use uh, uh, I use the uh, edge here for iterating. So we got one launch in the main app target and uh, the launch test in your UI test target and. Uh, as you can see right here, so uh, in the app delegate, you can have some uh, simple setup. Like, uh, you have launch framework, provide you a launcher, with, uh, you can pass in uh, your UI view con controller. And how do I pass in that? So uh, just confirm to, they have a protocol creatable, confirm to it, pass it your view controller and uh, resend it. And uh, the framework will choose to resend it to perform your test. And what about the UI testing that you write? The UI testing that you write, of course, you, base, you will use the same string that you have, uh, confirm to the view controller testable and paste or check representable. Of course, the bots, the same thing. And uh, do your UI testing as normally, but it's only a single uh, UI view controller, so uh, it's much more simple and uh, may good for the screen that you need to test. For example, so this is one, of course, from uh, this is being testing with uh, uh, this launch framework method, so it doesn't have the navigation bar like the uh, the other one, uh, like the one we see before. Yeah. So it doesn't have to navigate anything, perform all the thing in this view controller. Yeah, very simple to set up with this launch framework. And uh, let's look at about some code that uh, we need to uh, uh, remove the app. So we already see the case of the, the code before, see the case of the uh, remove from uh, an iPhone app. What about an iPad? So uh, we made this case Where's my, uh, yep. So after we run the last test, there's now two apps, one on the dock, one on the home screen. So uh, if we, uh, let's see, if we, uh, no, wait a minute, I need to explain this code. So we find a string ball right here, we got a string ball tie XCUI application. Yep. And so let's try to find, uh, so, how many icons are there in the screen? So we got one Firefox right here, and one Firefox right here. 
Firefox focus on. On to the same identifier, same name, same identifier. So, uh, may not useful if you find the icon directly, right? So, uh, you may, so you may want to find uh, directly and see what happened. So, uh, the Firefox focus right here. So, it will show one belong to the multitasking dog. Yep. And uh, let me see if we have a way to find the other. The C uh, P O app. No. <coughs> so we already got one belong to that name is the other elements called multitasking dog. And one, you belong to the home screen icons. I think we got lost somewhere. Yeah, identifier, home screen icon. So the way that you have to fire your icons for you to delete, is of course, for peels, rainbow, or the elements. Uh, let's see. I already write the code right here. Yeah, home screen icons and icons five for soccer. That's the way you found it. And uh, another thing, because iPad, you have to rest longer. Duration should be 2, not 1.3. And uh, that's how you're going to delete the thing. This one. So you find, finally find the Firefox focus thing. And uh, seems like it breaks some flow. Seem like break some flow along the way. All right. Okay, let's run this again. So this is using the clipboard to sign in, find the text field first match. So we are in the delete my app. I may missing something over there. So uh, press, long press, open, delete, done. So uh, that's my demo for today. So uh, thank you. That's it, the techniques I want to say. Thank you.